What an impressive entrance. It's interesting that there are two burial caves that their entrance is so impressive. I'm referring to the entrance surface, to the beautiful three arches and the terrace above, which enables to talk about the uh, deceased. One is the cave of the coffins and this cave where Yehuda Anasi and his family are buried. Now, Rabbi Yehuda Anasi headed the public institutions of the Jews in Israel sometime between 175 and 220 CE. This is considered the golden age of Jewish life in Israel during the late Roman period. During his presidency, normal relations were maintained with the Roman authorities and he managed to establish close relationship with the Roman rulers. The economy stabilized and improved also following regulation he established. The institutions he led, which were the presidency of the Sanhedrin, the head of the courts and head of the yeshiva, shaped the life and I will also add that they impacted life of Jews outside Israel. They had significant impact on the diaspora. On one hand, he succeeded in driving the Jewish elite to get closer to him, and on the other hand, he enabled access to the simple, ordinary population which was not familiar with the Torah but his great enterprise, which defined him in Jewish history, was the signing of the Mishnah. The Mishnah is a written collection of the Jewish oral traditions, also known as the Oral Torah. Still, his influences on the political, economic and social environments were important in his time, but also had impact on future generations. Rabbi Yudanasi was an excellent statement. He supported the Roman authorities and in return, they strengthened his status. Rabbi received from the emperor as a gift or lease lands in towns and villages in various places in the north of the country. One of the places was Beit Shearim and its surroundings, which was considered Kingland in the Second Temple period and probably served as a source of income for the presidential family. In addition, he was given special rights such as the power to pass a death sentence, a power which was not granted to leaders in other provinces. At the same time, he led his reforms, all with the aim of achieving normalization in the life of the people. The reforms of Rabbi Yudanasi were executed through his regulations. A regulation is a rule that replaces an existing regulation which Rabbi's goal was to adapt it to the reality created considering the changing circumstances. For example, the Torah states that interest must not be taken. On the other hand, the economic transactions within the municipal society in the days of Rabbi Yehuda Anasi justified the repayment of a debt to the lender with the additional of interest. Rabbi Yehuda amended the regulation that allows de facto lending with interest. It is important to emphasize that his regulations did not only apply to religious life, but also to the political, social, and economic environments. Rabbi Yehuda Nasi moved from Beit Sharim to Tsipori, where he lived for 17 years. Then, after his death, he was brought for burial here in this cave in Beit Sharim. Since the time Rabbi Yudanasi was buried in Beit Sharim, 
the place became a preferred burial site for local Jews and Jews of the diaspora. They wanted to be buried in Israel and close to Rabbi Yudanasi, who became a national symbol. Three inscriptions were found here. The name Rabbi Shimon, the name of Rabbi Yudanasi's son. Also here is a name, little Anina, corresponding to Rabbi Anina Bahama, who was his disciple. A third inscription found that of Rabbi Gamliel, Rabbi Yudanasi, second son. Now, these three names are mentioned in Rabbi Yudas' will, which I will shortly refer to. The tombs here are all niche type, as you can see. At that time, the dead were placed on a surface or in a sarcophagus for a year until only the bones remained. Then the bones were collected into ossuary or pottery urn, depending on the longest bone size, and that was placed into the alcove. Let's enter the inner hall. There are two adjacent rectangular graves here. They were covered with stone slabs. Such a double grave is an exception in Becharim. Two graves are of Rabbi Yudanasi and his wife. In his will, Rabbi Yudanasi asked to be buried in the ground. It's certainly interesting that there are no other graves here beside these two that are buried in the ground. In Beit Sharim, we see several types of burial. Use of niches, as we saw here, and in the Menorah tomb complex. These burials requires investment in querying and a facility that contains the bones. We saw burials in sarcophagi when visiting the cave of coffins and some other caves. Some of the sarcophagi included impressive decorations. And we also saw many, especially in the menorah tomb complex. Ercosolium type tombs consist of a niche whose ceiling is arch, which requires quite a significant effort and know-how for its preparation. And here are two very simple graves. Now, there is a contrast here between the great wealth that Rabbi Yudanasi had in his life and the way he chose to be buried. Many articles have been written on this contrast. If you remember the beginning of the video, I mentioned that Rabbi Yudanasi held all three governing positions. In his will, he assigned them as follows. Rabbi Shimon, his son, to be appointed as sage, that is, to head the yeshiva, the highest institute teaching Torah. His son, Rabbi Gamliel Barabi, will be the president, the highest position handling both internal governing issues and external relationships, mainly with Rome. The last appointment was assigned to Hanina Bahama, his disciple, to be chief of the court or chief justice. There is so much to see in Bet Sharim, the cave of the coffins, the amazing menorah caves complex, the city on the hill. You can watch these places in the various videos as part of Bet Sharim playlist. And finally, as usual, a question for you. Rabbi Yudanasi established trust with Rome. Who was the emperor? that had close ties with Rabbi Yehuda. 
The answer will appear in five seconds.